Hey, this is Mike, and I've got Lou Eaker with us. That's the, mm -hmm. per, per, the uh, correct pr pronunciation, but I've always called him Euchre, and some people call him Ucker. Uh, I suppose you don't really care what they call you as long as it's not late to dinner, right? <laughs> late to any meal. Right, yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what we're going to talk about here real quick is uh, smallmouth. We're going to have a few different videos in a series that we're going to put together. And the first thing we're going to talk about is what, what is a really good fly to use uh, when you're chasing smallmouth? You know, with smallmouth, it depends on the scenario. Uh, most of the time, I tend to believe in efficiency more than going with... Um, more than going with imitating something. So okay. you want to make sure that you are trying to cover the right type of habitat when you work. So your fly is really a tool for your presentation. It's not necessarily I need to imitate this specific thing. There's scenarios when that happens. Uh, I break down smallmouth flies in just a couple of different classes. So I have my deep subsurface flies. Um, that's where you're going to get your classics, your crayfish patterns. You're going to get um, your clouds or minnows, things that get used all the time. Mm -hmm. I actually don't use those as much as a lot of other people unless I'm in specific scenarios, typically wade fishing scenarios. I'll pull those flies out more. Um, most of the time I fish unweighted streamer patterns. So you've seen me tie a bunch of very, very simple bucktail flies. They cast very easily. They cover a lot of ground without a lot of effort. Right. And really the focus there is to make my presentation over as much of the correct habitat as possible, trying to look for those aggressive fish. So when you're in normal summer scenarios um, where you're looking to cover a lot of ground for your feeding fish, fall scenarios when they're selective on bait fish, and then even again in cool spring weather, uh, big streamers elicit a lot of strikes from larger fish because you can call them in from longer distance. What about color? Color, I'm a little weird on color. Um, I tend to fish white 90% of the time because I can see it well. So the movement in your presentation, uh, how the smallmouth reacts to what you're doing with the fly at that time, that has a lot to do with my fly choice, and the color just allows me to see that easier. There are time frames where I might get something more specific. I might use brighter colors. If I have stained water, I may occasionally go to black. If it stands out really well, has high contrast with the background. Um, most of the time, I'm fishing white just because I can see it well. Okay. Um, All right. Length? What would that good length be? It's going to vary. I fish basically the same patterns in... Call it small, medium, large. So in a lot of small stream scenarios, uh, really clear water scenarios, I'll fish anything from one and a half, two inches on up to seven or eight inches for some of those bigger smallmouth presentations. A lot of times I'll have some two inch long patterns, some four or five inch patterns, which is what I fish the majority of times, probably about four, four and a half inches Okay. Uh, for those streamers. And then occasionally, typically in the fall or early spring, um, I'll fish some six and seven and occasionally eight inch patterns for big smallmouth. Or in scenarios where I'm kind of doing a mixed bag, where I'm looking a little bit for, I don't know if a smallmouth or a muskie or a striper is going to eat this. I don't care. I'm going to have a fun time with whatever three eats it. Okay, what about uh, streamers versus poppers? Particular fly for particular times, right? Yeah, so I use streamers a lot because they fish very efficiently. Okay. But there are times when poppers are really a great go-to. In fact, when I was guiding for smallmouth, a lot of my biggest fish uh, for clients came on poppers. Okay. I think the biggest one I ever had a client catch was on a popper. Now, part of the reason poppers are great is if you have fish that are in an isolated area, I actually use poppers a lot wade fishing as opposed to float fishing. I can call fish in from a long distance, but I can fish them slowly or quickly. So I kind of have two different presentations I fish with poppers. Uh, a lot of times I'll fish poppers very slow, I'll dead stick poppers, make some noise and leave them there for 5, 10, 15 seconds. Really allow that fish to find it, come up and take it. Um, and then I'll fish sometimes, especially in dirty water, something that works really well on big smallmouth is to fish a large popper, like the one I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. four or five inch, very loud, this guy, very loud, uh, obnoxious popper that makes a ton of noise. And in those circumstances, I'll actually fish them on a really constant retrieve, making a bunch of noise. It was, uh, in experimenting trying to fish poppers for muskies that we figured that out, that in dingy water... The smallmouth really liked those big poppers, so we kept having big smallmouth eat them, so we just downsized a bit and did really well with those. Most of the time when I fish poppers, though, I'm fishing something um, a lot slower, so something like a bull bug or a blockhead popper. And then in clear water, I'll go to a, like a darter style, like a sneaky peat or a boogle bullet, um, any, some, any, something really quiet like that, and that's a really good sight fishing fly. Especially in shallow water here, we get a lot of those smallmouth on those really shallow flats. Yeah. If you spot them, it's a good way to get a fly eight, ten feet in front of a fish, barely make any noise, and it's remarkable how many big smallmouth respond to that really well. In fact, I do better doing that 
um, in shallow water than with crayfish, which is kind of the common, if you're sight fishing, use a crayfish pattern, use something like that so you can, um, you know, get to the bottom, try to pick that fish up like you're sight fishing for redfish. But in fact, a lot of times, I find because the popper makes a little less clunk on the surface, um, they're more apt to respond well to that than to respond to something dragging on the bottom, though it can go either way. But yeah, really, outside of it's streamers, poppers, and occasionally crayfish patterns, see the majority of what I'm fishing. It's a pretty simple setup. What's your favorite? My favorites are pretty simple. It's a dumbed down uh, deceiver minnow or uh, the Popovix style deceivers, which are very you know, simple cones of bucktail, very easy right. to cast. If you're going to make a lot of casts, having something that doesn't weigh anything but has a fair bit of size is really what I like to go with. With little material? Not very much material, simple pattern, um, great minnow shape, but because of the conical shape of that fly, it's not a flat profile like a classic deceiver. Mm -hmm. It's more of a cone shape, so it actually pushes a little bit more water and has a tendency to dart quite a bit. Give it, give it, it gives the fly a lot of natural movement. Um, and it allows the fly to sink very slowly, so large smallmouth have a tendency, last fall, that big one you hooked while you are fishing, hits on a complete dead stick. You had to remind me of that, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did have to remind you of that. It was a, that, um, that was a nice fish. That was a big fish. So you're going to have those fish, and a lot of times those bigger fish respond like that one did. You know, it comes up, stares at the fly, you give the fly a little twitch, the fly hasn't sunk out of the zone. So that's part of why I go with the unweighted flies versus going with uh, some classic like a Clouser minnow. Okay. Clouser is a great pattern, but when you have those big small mouth in the clear water that are coming up and looking at flies, the ability for the fly to stay there and barely move, it just breathes in the water, um, really is a great trigger for those big small mouth. It doesn't take a lot of movement. In fact, if you move too fast, they'll follow it and they won't eat it. The ability to have that big fish come up after you make a lot of movement with the fly, you strip the fly real fast, you give the fly a pause, the fish shows up to stare at it. One little twitch and the fly sits there and breathes for a second, it doesn't move, and they just gently suck it in completely, completely duped, which is one of my favorite things to watch a four or five pound smallmouth do that. Kind of like the one that I <laughs> that I hooked into. Yes, and that one. Got away. Yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, that's it on the flies. Uh, we'll get into another part, another segment of this uh, series of interviews with uh, Lou, and um, we'll catch you on the next video.